Hi there, and so today we're going to be looking at an exploit kit. Now I know a lot of you, when I say exploit kit, you're probably going to be going, oh, let's look at all of the exploits. The problem with this is that we already don't have, they're not on here, that I've not been given them. So, so I mean, that's not what this is today. Um, it's interesting though to know and understand what exploit kits and tell obviously it's php which is pretty boring to some people but there's some interesting concepts and and things that yeah maybe it'll be interesting to you guys so i decided to make the video i got i got it given to me apparently it was leaked in some way i don't know if the owner was hacked in which i've sort of given a theory but it's very loose it's very loose anyway so let's crack on with the so because really that's that's what it should be all about um Really, I should have a better recording dimensions than this, but I've done it now, so accept it. It looks to be leaked, like I say, I haven't been on hack forums or nulled for quite a long time, so um, yeah, it's it's. I don't know really how popular this was, but by looking at Google Cache and seeing and understanding that some of the results, there was people talking about it and saying it was fairly good, so I had a little look. Someone had messaged me today about it, so I had some time to have a look at it today. Heavy use of APIs, so we're going to be looking at how it uses, well, briefly analysing Namecheap and how they do that. And then we've also got um, scan for you they use that. They also use Cloud DNS API. It's, it, you can see that they have experience in PHP, but there are some, some still at... There are still errors there, um, which, you know, I'm being picky with because, to be honest, a lot of it is little things. I don't have the full picture because I wasn't the one that leaked it or didn't hack it. I was simply given a, a small amount of files, and so a lot of this may be incorrect in some ways and you'll see what i mean later on anyway so the database is around 100 megabytes and because of it's because of it it records every single visitor that goes to a certain page it logs that down uh, and then if it's successfully exploited it will say you know it's been exploited but every single hit will be um put into the database which is why it's so large Anyway, so um, config.php, let's have a look here. Well, I'm being picky, not huge, but static salt. You always want a dynamic salt. Sufficient password lengths as well, that's what I noticed from here, is that they obviously understand security to some degree. This was hosted on OVH, simple IP, you know, looking at the IP and seeing what what internet service provider it came from. So fairly, to be honest, there's a lot of abuse on OVH, so it wasn't that surprising, but still a little bit annoying. And one of the first things that I think was interesting is the file upload functionality. So I first thought, hmm, maybe it was null byte, but you know, that is a very big long shot because, you know, that, that has been fixed for some time now. So it's, it is quite a big long shot from me. I understand that but let's so it has subscribers which register and they have a certain subscription fee where they can upload their file and get um, you know a certain amount of traffic and it exploits right that's what an exploit kit is um, in files.php you can upload a file and um, they have a functionality for that they have a lot of functions for everything which is programmatically very good um, so that's what sort of gave me the um, understanding that they were fairly competent in programming unlike a lot of other panels that i've done including exploit kits which to be honest are quite laughable so i'm all about it we do some checks on if it's valid so we have a i've got my face in the way there we go we've got this array of extensions which are acceptable um uh, so it's a basically a whitelist instead of a blacklist that's a good idea well done correct um but there is um you know, I feel like there is capability for a null byte. Um, they used path info to validate, um, but it could be an old version. This is this is the thing: is that it's probably not viable now if they have a new server. So it's one of them things, like I said at the start, which is I'm sort of having a guessing game because I have no real idea on the environment it was in. I know it's in Jinx. But I don't know the PHP version or anything like that. Um, and the, the small letters of imports PHP has, hash, pass, blah, 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 PHP password hashing lib is because they have in there includes this if function doesn't exist then um, import it through this way. And um, I don't imagine exploit kit to be um, really 
multiple servers at one time in in this form so um possibly it is because password verify was implemented in 5.4 of the php version and i believe this is null boy poison in 5.34 so i don't know <laughs> one interesting thing as well is how they hold some executables so these executables um they were essentially in temp this temp folder um, and they were just numerical there wasn't any sort of HT access and there wasn't any I don't know I didn't see any rules I later found out it was an Nginx server so I didn't see I couldn't see any rules this is my issue but the direct um, links it's very easy to guess and numerical uh, names is never good so just poor standards in in that shape to be honest uh, the Namecheap API is used to register new domains and they do this because exploit kits need a fresh amount of domains every single day because they get marked as malicious, which isn't good. Anyway, so um, I, basically I don't know if this is Namecheap's fault or just that they're very attracted to Namecheap. It's quite hack forums once you see they're using Namecheap to be... Um, registering domains for an exploit kit. Um, as we can see, the the who is isn't exactly verifiable. Um, but it is interesting to note that it is name cheap um, because possibly multiple accounts using stolen credit cards, or is it just incompetence from name cheap? That is a different story altogether. Another API that we use. Oh no, wait, that's I don't I don't talk about scam for you. It's pretty boring actually. I think I put it here. Yeah, it's just the disabled SSL, which was I I don't know. They couldn't get it to work, which is a pretty douche move. There's a lot of things that there's certain things that they look like they know what they're doing, and then there's other points where it's like maybe they don't. Um, there are, in the domain generation, bleh, they do have a domain generation algorithm. I'm absolutely awful today with pronunciation. Anyway, um, they do have it to register these domains. They don't have a static list of, um, domains per se to register. They generate them in a sort of what they call a DGA, but to be honest, not really that random. So they've got these text files, TXT files, which you can actually look at. Um, because they're static, they're available. They've got a limited amount of extensions. So bid, XYZ, trade, PW, win, website, top text, base site, party online, loan, download, date, and accountant. Don't see .net or .com, do you? There's, there, there is a reason. It, it's, it's all of use, isn't it? Um, so they use the RAND function, which isn't exactly the best function, but as this isn't really mission critical or cryptographic, it's not anything major. And really, you could, the, the, the values here are the, the size of how many words are in there? In the, it's essentially a word list, isn't it? Um, and they use nouns twice, as you can see. Um, so it is biz word, noun, another noun, and an extension. And so I've given you a little example down below there. Bill Ardvark Act dot top would be one output from their domain generation algorithm. Now, it is great, you know, it's a fairly okay one, but to be honest, it isn't a huge amount. There's only 100 biz words, total nouns is 2,326, 2, I can't read numbers all of a sudden. And um, when I looked, it wasn't, in the database, there wasn't a vast amount of randomness from it. Um, while we increase the combinations by use of two nouns, as I say, fairly small. Um, uses the same biz words and nouns to create subdomains from the domain, so it's fairly guessable if you get your hands on on these. Now, um, obviously you've got the SRAND value to make it um, a little bit harder to understand what's coming next, but it's not really that random, to be honest. When, it when you do DGAs, that is not a good one. That's, that's what I'd say about this. Interestingly enough, they have a file that's actually openly available um, that does some shell execution commands. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it is, as I say here, you could keep flooding this request, this page. So if it goes down, you keep flooding it, keep flooding it, because it's just restarting the services. You really have to know the path and functions optimize. Are you going to get that in a brute force list? I don't know. Understanding the page behavior as well, because you've got the page, but once you see optimize.php, um, there's a lot of brute force lists and a lot of pages that you've got to do to interact with. Are you going to understand the 
the page behavior and then I've got in caps I don't know why I put it in caps it's not really good enough is is what I'm saying here it's not really good enough um, so still unsure if the direct directories were viewable if they were you could probably find this and from the output you could probably get some you, well, you would. You would get an understanding. So, in that sense, it's not good. Uh, information disclosure. This one's really funny. Now, this was in functions as well. Cron.php, which is actually, obviously, quite brute forceable. Cron.php is going to be in a word list. Um, it's unauthenticated. There's no real need to be anyone whatsoever. There's no checks. Um, and it outputs all hashes, file names, and URLs from the database, from the files. So, you know, if you want to get some, you know, malware... Give, give that page a view. Um, that's certainly available. All you need really is the intelligence of the actual server location, the server IP, which honestly you could probably get from somewhere and then all you have to do is brute force it. Um, so this is actually used for remote URL updates where it's actually updating the hash, but at the same time that isn't the best way of doing things. And that's where it's like sometimes dumb, sometimes quite good in programming. You know, there's there's certain bits. Uh, they do actually encrypt their files, which I'm interested in. I don't have any access to their exploits, so I don't know really what goes on. I'm a little bit blind. But it utilizes its RC4 in some way to encrypt the files. The files are you, you put into a header, and they are RC4 encrypted with the same key, which is Sukumai. Sounds like some anime bullshit. I don't really know. Um, I'm unsure why they chose the stream cipher, RC4, instead of block, to be honest. Um, there's enough AES... Um, libraries out there if you don't want to implement it yourself you know who does that um so i didn't really understand what was going on there all files are presumably downloaded through the exploit phase and then it's decrypted i'm assuming um it also uses rc4 to encrypt tokens and the rc4 has biases and it is slightly broken that's why wi-fi and other applications uh, like bluetooth are moving away from this encryption algorithm because it's slightly broken and so slightly well it is fairly broken and so it's interesting to note that someone is actually still using this um, algorithm to be honest um, it wasn't modified in any way and it was actually using what seemed to be the mini rc4 library from that url and why i'm saying seems to be is because maybe it was just dumb luck but it was very very similar actually identical so i'm assuming they googled rc4 mini client or whatever um, <clears throat> and they found that um, in the database, fairly interesting, the last part of this um, wonderful analysis. Uh, database backup available in the web directory. I'm unsure if it was just the incompetency of the developer. I don't think it was the hacker now. I do think it was the incompetency of the developer. Um, certainly brute forcible, um, backup.sql. Um, I don't know why someone thought that would be a good idea, to be honest. It's not, if you didn't know. Um, nine users registered on the exploit kit database, which you might be thinking, well, that's fairly low. But actually, if they're, you know, if it's quite a hefty price, I haven't looked at any prices or anything, then that's quite viable, to be honest. It was quite actually quite impressive. Oh, clicks. It was actually quite impressive. Four hundred thirty-three hundred thousand recorded hits, which were not infection rates, but actual hits. Um, Sixty-seven thousand hit UK hits. Thirty-three thousand US hits. So UK was the second highest. US was the third, and Russia is the most hit country, which had 69,000 hits. Now, the infections was completely different, and this is where the security of the world, you see, India had the most infected um, in the country, it got exploited the most, then it was Russia, and then it was the US, and the overall infection is 77,000, which doesn't sound that high, but with the amount that you've got from there, and the operation, which is actually probably fairly small from hack forums, the infection rate is 19.16% percent or 19.16 sounds a bit better doesn't it um and that's actually quite good i was quite surprised advertisers are also used amongst other url sources from what i could see from the referrers but it's i don't know there's a lot of mm, confusing and unsure whether they are Intentionally using that service or exploiting that service. Anyway, so hard to understand where the original track is, is from, but some URL refers did refer to adult. So, you know, I think there was a range of infection sources, um, traffic sources rather, but um, 
I think predominantly adult, from what I could see. Uh, again, you know, I spent a couple of hours on it, so it's interesting to see, but yeah. All days from database is from September 2016, so it's fairly, fairly old, fairly old. Great for historical threat intel, uh, because you get to see every single hit from every single IP. There's lots of different information, uh, which gives, there's a lot of information available to you. The files, um, I have not at this time analysed any of the files that are being spread. Some of the interesting things were, from the remote file updates, were they were called Andro Smoke. Who's using Smoke Loader in 2016-17? I'm worried. And Beta, obviously. Which, you know, some of them was... Maybe Beta Bot, but to be honest, it was probably a cracked version, though, in hack forums. Most XC sizes were to 200-300 kilobytes, which, to be honest, is pretty poor. There was one that looked fairly professional, which had 10 kilobits. Bits? Kilobytes? Um, nothing really impressive from what I could see. Um, so, small operation... And finally, the files I was given did not have any exploits in. I said that at the start, but I think I should have said that now. So fairly well coded, but still has some huge mistakes. Uses PDO classes, functions correctly. I don't. I know that's like standard, but when it comes down to malware, it's like you sort of have to say, oh, well done, you've used PDO or something of preparing statement. You have to congratulate someone. That's the level we're at in this. Uh, fairly good infection rate for an exploit kit in hack forums, to be honest. So fairly impressed. Um, I only had a few hours to look at this. It was only the panel. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I understand that maybe it was a little bit uninteresting. Maybe you just moved on a little bit and viewed little bits of it. But there's a lot that I could look at this. But at the moment, I've just glazed over a few things that I thought I found interesting. Anyway, so maybe another video? Possibly. Um, but yeah, hopefully you're having a good time. I know it's late in the month. I know every video I put out, someone says make more videos. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm not. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Hopefully you have a good time and I'll see you guys in the next video, which hopefully is going to be the podcast soon. See you later, guys.